Good morning, everyone. I am Melody Crenshaw, the Transfer Virginia Portal Coordinator. And my area of, of work right now is the Transfer Virginia Portal, and I'm going to give you a tour on that this morning. So thank you very much for joining. I would like to introduce Nicole Hutchison. She is the VCCS uh, Director of Transfer and Emily Jones Green, who is the VCCS Cre Credits to Careers Coordinator. You may see them in the question and answer. They're going to be taking your questions and uh, Nicole will read them to me at the end. Um, and just that little piece, uh, we won't unmute for this uh, webinar, but you should see a Q&A icon at the bottom of your, your Zoom uh, toolbar. And please use that if you come up with questions. So for the next 40 minutes, I want to celebrate National Student Transfer Week, Transfer Student Week, excuse me, by telling you about the Transfer Virginia portal and giving you a tour of the features in the portal. A video recording of this will be available in the Portal Resource Center after the webinar. So while I may go very quickly through the tour, you will be able to watch it again. And I will leave about 10 minutes at the end for the question and answers. Um, so don't hesitate to, to leave a question. So the Transfer Virginia Portal is a web-based statewide tool that closes the information gap for all students across Virginia, providing full transparency of student options in transfer. Through this comprehensive data and resource warehouse and search engine, Students have the tools necessary to explore careers, programs and courses, and really maximize their transfer experience. The portal will provide course equivalencies and credit award estimates for exams, passport and UCGS courses, transfer courses, dual enrollment, and credit for prior learning. Students and faculty and staff will have direct access to transfer data, including the new transfer guides and state level documents like the guaranteed admission agreements. The portal also serves as a conduit to connect students to institutions directly for early engagement and support through the transfer process. So let's go see what the portal is all about. All right. So this is the homepage, and you can find that at www.transfervirginia.org. My first stop is going to be the yellow toolbar along the top. And let's first start with the transfer partners. This is a great place to start your research about the colleges who participate in the portal. And this is limited to the state of Virginia. You've got our two-year transfer partners. This is the 23 Virginia Community College System Colleges and Richard Bland College. You've got the four-year transfer partners. These are fully participating colleges. Um, and by fully participating, the, both the two years and the four-year transfer partners, yes, there's information to learn about the colleges themselves, but it goes one step farther and you can see their list of courses and their list of programs and additional information. Our future transfer partners are four-year public and private universities who either have chosen not to be full participants or um, just haven't gotten there yet. We've got, I believe, five of them coming on with our fall update. So this list will get smaller in the future and the transfer partners will increase. We've also got a couple additional Virginia colleges. When you click on their icons, you'll go directly to their website. So let's just take a look at what is in these links. So if you click on a two-year partner, you're going to see a description of their college. You can choose whether you are a first-time college student or a transfer student. And slight differences there, maybe on the application information or some of the deadlines. You can click each of these accordions and it opens up specific information about that college. So um, various information. Um, here we've got 
application and financial aid information. So for example, are tests required for the application or is an essay required? Important dates, so deadlines, when those applications might be due. Explore Our Major includes links to the college website directly to, for example, their science, technology, engineering, and mathematics division. Academic options will include handy things like weekend and evening courses. Yes, it would be grayed out if they didn't have weekend and evening courses. Um, does this particular college offer high school dual enrollment? Campus services and engagement. Here you can see that this college does not offer campus housing, but they do have student clubs and organizations. The military friendly drop down shows that they have a dedicated person of contact for military members, and this also includes dependents. They also have someone that will help you with the GI Bill and tuition assistance. And all colleges have helpful links with their CHEV college profile, the CHEV state financial aid programs, their course catalog, and some colleges have added two more. You often see virtual tours under the helpful links. So that's what you're gonna find in a, an institution profile. There's also a pink uh, tab here that opens up some quick facts. So is this college an urban setting or in a city setting? Um, do they, there's a map so you can see where in Virginia this particular college is located. This happens to be a public two-year. You can see public and private two-year and four-year options there. And really handy, the total undergraduate population and their average class size. You can use this information to compare colleges. All right. The next one I want to point out is the catalog search. This is a very popular tab. This is how you search for degree programs or for courses. And please don't scroll through all of these thousands and thousands of degree programs. Use the filters on the left-hand side. You can filter by institution. So choose the college that you wanna search. You can search by award level. So if you are interested in a bachelor's degree program, just choose that one. If you're a high school student and you're looking for UCGS information, click on that. Also handy is searching for programs by career cluster. So you know you're interested in information technology. Get rid of all of the other programs that don't fall under the information technology heading. And then finally, delivery mode. This is really important if you know that you learn better in class, in an, in an on-campus setting. Choose those degrees that require you to be there in person. Or just the opposite. You work full-time and you know you want an online degree that you can do at your own convenience, maybe late at night. Choose online and that will show you just those programs that are available to, to you completely online. Um, we'll have a chance to come back and look at a program in just a moment. Um, actually, no, let's, let's look at one right now. In this case, I am going to choose Tidewater and let's look at their business program. So they have an Associate of Science in Business Administration. And there is a lot of information here. First of all, a description of the program. And when you click show more, in fact, this one doesn't show us anymore, um, but you can see in this case, courses required for business administration are available on all four of their campuses. That's probably good information to know. Um, course by course requirements for this program will be coming shortly. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek later. Then some good information that is program specific under the program overview and guidance. You can see that this is offered online. 
is this degree right for me? There isn't anything on listed on that one, but there are some important program requirement notes. So this one is telling you which courses are best for, for you to take for this program. There's some program success and highlight information, how many graduates they have. If you've already completed a, an associate degree, how does this fit into Tidewater's program? Well, it says that the student development requirement is waived for students who have completed an associate or bac baccalaureate degree, um, but everything else will be evaluated and transferred as it applies to the business administration program. You got some other information there. There's some transfer information under college level information. Um, this is probably more specific to the four years, what percentage of applicants uh, who apply as transfer students are accepted into the programs. And there's some college information here. Um, what catalog year are you if you are a transfer student? That varies by institution. And then I really like these, where can this degree transfer? So you're at Tidewater, you complete their business administration associate degree, where can you go after that? that is kind of a seamless transfer. So you see Eastern Mennonite University has some business degrees. James Madison has some business degrees there. Um, let's, uh, let me go one step. No, let's go, let's go to the James Madison University marketing program. That makes sense. You do business administration associate degree because you want to uh, focus on marketing. So with one click, now you're in James Madison's program, looking at marketing. All of this information is the same as we just saw. Now it's specific to James Madison, but there is this new applicable admissions agreement link. And what this is, it tells you if you're coming from Tidewater or from any of the VCCS colleges, there is a guaranteed admission agreement with James Madison. So this really says, and you would want to go in and read the details, but if you have completed a certain degree and you've got a, a certain GPA, then the transfer process is a little bit easier than just applying as a brand new student. Finally on this, um, and I'm specifically looking at this tab on the four-year university programs, but it exists on the two-year also, careers where this degree applies. And this is looking at the ONET program's list of career fields. And you can actually click on these and find out more information about jobs in this particular area. So let's say you were interested in being a mar market research analyst or a marketing specialist. You can click on this, learn about the tasks that that particular job does, and even look at live job postings. So see where, see where this career will get you. All right, fantastic. Let's go back up to this yellow tab and go to the next one. This is events. Transfer Virginia wants you to see various transfer related events at the various colleges. Or for example, look, here's the Transfer Virginia portal tour that you're on right now. You can see other uh, transfer related events or if you don't see the one you want immediately on the first page, again, you can choose the school that you're interested in or the type of event. And look, there are five transfer fairs um, being held this week for National Transfer Student Week. Um, and so you can click on one of these. If one happens to be close nearby for you, you could attend their transfer fair. Or if there's a particular college you're interested in, you can look for their events. And then finally, you can log in or you can create an account. I encourage any user to create a free account because it will help you save bookmarks, programs or colleges that you're interested in. You can bookmark those so you can return to them immediately the next time you log in. Also a free account for students or for, for other users will allow you to store items in your portfolio and not have to re-enter them every time you wanna check credits. We're gonna look at that screen in just a few moments. But here are some of the benefits of creating a Virginia, Transfer Virginia account. 
And in fact, I am going to, uh, I'll log in in just a moment. Now I wanna to move to this blue bar in the middle and go through some of those items. Oh, and one thing I do wanna say, if you are working at a college, you're an advisor, you're some sort of staff member, admissions registrar, your college portal manager can create that free account for you. And you do see additional items when you have a college account. All right, on this blue bar, very important, get started. Every website should have a get started so you know how to, how to get around it. There are just some basic questions, but those questions will help you get to where you need to be within the portal very quickly. Um, later this fall, you'll be able to see how-to videos also on the get started page. Transfer steps shows exactly what it indicates. Steps in a successful transfer experience. Transfer tools, utilize the database to find critical information. We'll come back because I wanna spend some time on that particular one. Resource Center, this has a number of helpful worksheets, um, agreements, documents. You can filter by the audience, who are you? Um, some of these, worksheets might help students think of costs on top of tuition or help you plan before meeting a college advisor. This resource center is also the official repository for the community college's course content summaries and transfer guides. These are kind of the academic side of Transfer Virginia, but this is helping streamline the transfer between the two years and the four-year colleges. Okay. I want to come back to transfer tools. We'll look at that contact and institution in a moment. So some basic things here, where can my major transfer? So just to give you an idea, if I am at Tidewater Community College and I am doing business administration, let's do this one. And I search, where can that major transfer? I am now seeing a long list of universities that have programs where my business administration degree can transfer. So you wanna go through and filter those again and find things that uh, are what you're interested in. Let's go to where will my course transfer? This is looking at the course instead of the program, but it's the same sort of thing. Um, also, let's reverse this. Where can I find an equivalent course? Think about you are a student at a four-year university and you are in the process of completing your degree there, but you're going home for the summer and you really need to take a course over the summer at your local community college. Take a look at this. Let's try James Madison. And the course you need to take is COB 241, Financial Accounting. Can you take that at your local community college when you go back home for the summer? Look at all of the community colleges, and there are 35 entries here, where you can take Principles of Accounting 1, Accounting 211. I will point out that if you plan to take a, a course over the summer at a different college, please check with your advisor and make sure that that course does transfer back um, before you enroll in the course. And we've put a lot of disclaimers throughout the website. Please just don't, don't just focus on the information you're looking for, but read some of that header text too. There's good stuff there. Um, we will come back to check my credit in just a moment. Um, discover my future. This one is interesting. If you are thinking about uh, becoming a, an actuary, you've heard the term actuary, what does that mean? You can come here and search by that term and learn about that particular job or career. You can also not have any idea what you want to do, but you know it's going to be in um, the arts, audio, video, technology, and communications. Well, there's 77 items listed there. 
you can explore that way. So we've tried to give you good uh, career exploration information. I'm going to show you another piece in just a moment. Um, in addition to your degrees. All right. So now what I want to do is actually log in as a student. And you'll see the screen looks a little bit different. I really like these panels here that step you through the process. So your first time logging in, please take a moment and, and look through these steps. I'm gonna start with my story. So the profile was built a little bit when you created your account, but you can come here to add more information. So for example, um, you can add a phone number if you want, if that's a preferred way of contacting. You're gonna set your account up with an email. So that's one way that, that uh, colleges can reach out and contact you. But if you prefer to add a phone, you can. If you are currently a student at a college, you can put that institution name in, you can enter your program name and enter your current GPA. I'll show you where that's going to be important in just a moment. If you have previous military service, you can also enter in your military occupation code, um, your start date, your current rank or your rank when you separated you'll have an opportunity, opportunity to put more military information in in just a moment. And then you can save that. That information will get transmitted if you reach out to a college through the portal. All right, I'm gonna skip portfolio for just a moment because I'm gonna come back and spend a good amount of time there in just a minute. You can add skills. Um, if you've got CPR, for example, or if you want items to print out on a resume, you can add those skills there. Career interests, again, part of your career exploration that we, that we include for you here. Read through these six different uh, skill areas and then come down and rank yourself. Are you high? in what they consider your realistic area or investigative interests. And then the top three groups that best describe you will be your codes. And when you click on find careers related to your interest profile, it's going to find careers that are high in your code, your, your interest areas. So explore that. It's fun to go see, see what your interests are. And then finally, Transfer Virginia Portal does have a resume builder, but also tips on creating resumes and uh, cover letters. You will be able to add some items from your portfolio into the resume builder, including those skills. And remember, it's not, a, it's not the final resume that you might wanna send, but it puts it into a nice format, and then you can go in and, and make adjustments as you, as you want. Okay, let me go play with the portfolio, one of my favorite pieces of the Transfer Virginia portal. And I want to delete that because I'm going to add it back. The portfolio is a collection of exams that you've taken, like AP exams in high school or CLEP exams after high school. Courses that you've taken at colleges whether it's in the state of Virginia or outside of the state. And I will tell you, if you're coming from out of state, the focus on building the databases has looked at in-state colleges, but some colleges and universities do have outside states or outside colleges uh, in, their, in their files. So you may get some results, but it might not be as thorough as you hope. Um, there are certifications. So for example, um, a Microsoft, or excuse me, a CompTIA Network Plus certificate. You can add that. Already in here, I have a college composition course that I took at Tidewater, and I have an American Red Cross CPR certification. I do want to add one more.
let's add an AP exam. And you can see, you can also add military occupations and courses. These other items farther down, um, awards, volunteer experience, jobs, that information will help populate your resume. So I'm gonna add an AP exam for French language and literature, or language and culture, sorry. Um, I took that in spring of 22. And I scored a four. Fantastic. So now we've got three items on our portfolio. And you can manually add things just like I did. It's that quick. Or if you are a student or have been a student at any of the VCCS community colleges or Richard Bland College, you can upload a transcript. You can also upload a joint services transcript if you were in the military. Very easy, quick process. Now that I've added things to my portfolio, the next thing you wanna do is check my credits. This is going to return a display of those credits estimated to be awarded by the various colleges. And you will see differences in the award amounts. And I will explain, um, Sometimes this might mean that you didn't score high enough on an AP exam. You know, if you scored a two, you're not gonna get any credit for that at most of these colleges. Um, the VCCS colleges are going to probably award you credit for a three or higher. There are some colleges that want a four or a five. And so this is a good way to come in and see, will you get credit for the exam based on your score? Or it may be that it's based on whether they have an equivalent course to the exam that you took. Um, let's just take a look also at the difference. Um, Old Dominion and Radford are right next to each other. One is awarding nine and one is awarding 11. So let's just take a look at that. Credits for evaluated credentials and non-evaluated credentials. Handy to have both and I'll show you why. Credits for evaluated credentials, um, they're awarding three credits for English composition and three credits for a total of six credits for French. Uh, one is for three credits for French 201 and another three for French 202. Okay, that's good to know. Remember that CPR class, that fell down here to the non-evaluated credentials. And I want to point this out because sometimes things will go down there, non-evaluated. But keep in mind, it may not be in this college's database. So it's not going to come back. Um, or it might be the kind of thing that you want to talk to the transfer advisor at that college to see if they really do award CPR certification. Or maybe it's based on the program. So now let's come back and look at Radford. Why was Radford a little bit more? Oh, look, they actually have the same three credits for English, but their French courses are four credits a piece. So they're awarding essentially the same courses. They just have a different structure for their credits. And so you might see that throughout the programs. Okay, um, I do want to pop up and show you something that isn't here yet in the live version, um, but it is in our test site and it's coming this fall. And this is really more of the nuts and bolts, the valuable piece of transfer credits. This is how do those transfer credits actually apply to your program of study? So you might have a lot of transfer credits, but if you've changed academic pathways, for example, um, some of those credits might not apply to your new pathway. So let's see what does apply. I want to uh, take a look at Tidewater's business administration. We looked at that one earlier. 
And now you actually see how my credits apply. So there is a total of 60 required credits for this associate degree. And there are six credits being applied. OK, well, what six credits are those? Oh, look, there's our English composition. And down here under foreign language electives, beginning French class for four, for three credits, for four credits. Not sure why it says four. Um, so this is showing you that the items in your portfolio do have a place to fit on the Tidewater program. Now, you remember that, um, and we didn't look at the Tidewater credits, but some colleges were giving six credits for the French exam, and I don't see the CPR uh, credential on here. Those are things that you can absolutely talk to a transfer advisor about. And you can see credits that did not apply. Um, I, would, I would ask about those. Okay, um, so that is super handy. That is coming soon. Um, also down here at the bottom, once the program plans are loaded and working for you, you can click cost to complete. Choose what state you live in because the various colleges may have an in-state tuition amount and an out-of-state tuition amount. Choose the mode of delivery that you're gonna do. Standard enrollment means you're probably gonna go on campus. If you are planning to complete your degree fully online, choose that one. There may be fees um, that either do apply to online students or don't. And in fact, Yes, the 54 credits to complete is there. I am seeing that that then estimates only three semesters to go. Um, I'm going to actually change this back to 60, which is probably not accurate for the number of credits, but it does show you the number of semesters that you might take. What this does is show you the cost per credit in this case. Some colleges will have a flat semester fee. A university might have that. And it's going to then multiply it out by the number of either semesters or credit hours that you have left to take. Um, it also breaks down the fees and gives you a description of those fees. Another case where you want to read the notes that are part of the page, please note that the above estimated costs do not include any federal, state, or other financial aid, grants, scholarships, et cetera, for which you might qualify. And those costs, those aids, that aid could substantially reduce your cost. So what we are giving you here is an apples to apples raw number estimate. When you apply for financial aid or for scholarships, that cost may, may vary uh, substantially. All right. The last thing that I want to show you is you've got these credits or these courses put into your portfolio, your, the items in your portfolio. Later this fall, you'll see how they apply to the course by course requirements for that particular degree you're interested in. The last step or the next step in your transfer experience is reaching out to the college and establishing contact with them. You would want to come up here to College Connect. And when you do that, it pulls information from the profile. Remember, you built your profile under my story. So it pulls the email on your account. You added the college information. It sends that. And then you want to select the reason for your request. Um, you want to choose the institution to send the information to and put a little message in there. So I do want to talk to a transfer advisor at this college. So let's say uh, how, how my credits apply to a program. And the institution I plan to attend, James Madison University. I am interested in their business administration. Oh, no, that's right. We wanted marketing. Great. And I plan to start in 2024 in the fall term. And I would like to meet with a transfer advisor. 
when you click Save Selections, it is going to generate a message through the portal to James Madison and send all of your information along. James Madison is going to receive that and they have what's called an advisor manager who will get an email saying, you've got a new email in the portal from a student, a new student request. And the advisor manager will then assign that request to a James Madison advisor. And because they can read that you're interested in marketing, and that you'd like to meet with a transfer advisor. And remember, you're already a business administration student. Oh, you're a good one with a 3.2. They know some things about you. They know you're coming from a VCCS college. Um, if they have a transfer advisor in their business school, you may get directly to that person. Um, you may get someone in the admissions office. However, that university has uh, their incoming student information requests being handled, you're going to go through that process. But what's really nice is that an advisor is going to reach out to you and they already know something about you. So they're really going to jump in and make your transfer experience just that much better because they know something about you. They're going to connect with you. So I am going to leave that there. Um, I hope that we've got some questions. Um, I am going to actually stop sharing and come back to this group. I know that was wonderful. We do have a couple of questions that have come in. Excellent. Um, so the first question is when a student uploads their transcript, mm -hmm. do the courses automatically populate in their course profile or do they have to manually enter each course? Oh, that's an excellent question. No, the beauty of uploading a transcript is that it reads from the transcript and automatically makes all of those entries in your portfolio. So if you've got a number of classes, you're going to see class by class on the portfolio. So that if you've got, you know, a lot of classes under your belt, that's the faster way to do it. Unfortunately, we are limited to just VCCS and Richard Bland at this point. Um, but hopefully in the future, we'll get some more. And it, you saw how quick it was to add an item. You can do that pretty fast. Thank you, Melody. The next question is one I can answer the beginning of, but I would love to have you elaborate on it. The question is, can we receive a copy of this recording? And yes, we are recording it. Um, but where will people be able to access a copy of this recording? Perfect. Um, shortly, um, if not later today, it will be there tomorrow. Sometimes the Zoom recordings are, take, a, take a minute to get to us. Um, you'll be able to find this recording in the resource center in the portal. Um, in the future, or as, we, as I'm creating more uh, videos, those will get housed in the resource center, including shorter how-to videos, how to add items to your portfolio, how to search for a particular program. Wonderful. Those are the only two questions that have come into the chat. But if anybody else has questions, please do feel free to put them into the chat for us. Or any features that you would like Melody to delve into a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We've got a little more time. Melody, may I make one uh, comment as well? Mm -hmm. um, and it pertains to the transcript, even though it won't read other transcripts um, outside of VCCS or Richard Bland, a student could still attach that uh, in their portfolio at, under others. So they could still attach that as a way for colleges to see their unofficial transcript from any other institution that they have attended. I love that. Um... And I am, um, there we go. You can click on your portfolio or click on your, your transcript, go ahead and upload that. Um, there are instructions for all others. Um, and actually that didn't say what I thought it was gonna say. So there is, Emily, will you come back and, and explain the steps on that? Sorry. Sure. So under um, un, when you're in the portfolio, 
uh, if you go up to my story under portfolio, mm -hmm. um, you can oh, actually attach a file there for anybody that would like to attach any other unofficial transcript. Perfect. Thank you. You're I've welcome. seen that and I've done it. It just wasn't coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> but this definitely is the way, uh, if you do have a VC VCCS transcript or Richard Bland, it's very quick. Are there any other questions? If there aren't any more questions, I just wanna thank you all for joining me this morning. Um, this recording will be made available uh, as quickly as I can. Please share it with your friends, share the website with your friends and Talk with other students, um, if you're a student yourself, talk with other students and let them know about this recording um, and celebrate National Transfer Student Week. Thank you so much for joining us today.